everyone, I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV. And if you're looking for a truck camper without a slide, all the amenities that's gonna fit your three quarter or one ton truck with that shorter six foot bed, you're gonna wanna see the Cirrus 820. Now, if you've never seen a truck camper and really not anything you're interested in, I don't know, you might wanna stick around because this is definitely not your grandpa's camper. All right, let's talk a little bit about it before we go inside. Uh, with all the amenities on it, it's gonna weigh right around 3,000 pounds. This truck camper only has one big option, and that is a rear awning. This electric side awning, it's standard, and so many other features are too. This is a big change from 2022, so if you were looking at this camper in the past, know that 2023 model is very different. There is one more package you can get on this that we'll talk about, and it is the off-grid lithium package. So if you're looking to kind of get away from the campgrounds, this is a super option and so stylish. All right, let's go inside, start taking a look at all the details in there. Let's go. The inside of a Cirrus truck camper, it's very neutral. So you could introduce any color that you wanted or maybe you like it nice and calm and neutral. I'm gonna start behind me here and show you the door. Now it seems a little weird to start there, but they have a Euro style door, two pockets at the top. You do have this long narrow window so that you can see out, be able to see what's behind you and of course, a blackout shade for nighttime, or maybe you don't want them seeing in, right? Down below, there is a bin. Now, a lot of people use that for trash. I think it's kind of small, but uh, you might store plastic bags or things that you need to grab quickly right here on the bottom. Now, on the right, you can't see a fire extinguisher there, but that is the holder for it. Always good to have that nearby in any RV, right? Let's move over. There is storage right here, walking in. They have these wonderful handles that you may have seen in other New Camp products that are flush with the cabinet. And when you push them, they pop out to make a handle. Um, when you open this, it's got a hanging rod at the top, but this is about two and a half feet deep. And of course, very tall. You do have a light at the top. You can turn that light on and off or you could put it on motion sensor. That's totally what I would do. Down below, you'll see some switches. Now, right under here, the first one is going to be the light right above me. The rest of them are the porch light, the awning light, and the backup camera. Remember, all of that is standard on this camper. Now, let's look right down at my feet here on the bottom. This switch right here, it's kind of at an odd spot, but that turns on a light on your steps on the outside. That's super helpful if it's nighttime, you're heading outside, you can see where you're stepping. Right next to that, the switch that will activate your electric jacks. Uh, again, really nice to have that down here by the floor so when you're outside, you can simply reach in the door and turn them on. All right, while I'm here, let's look at the wet bath behind me. Now, this is one of the things that has changed since the 2022 model. In 2023, they removed the flip down sink and they added a vessel sink. So on one hand right here, you've got a part of the switch to turn on the shower. And of course your nice sleek shower handle can be a handheld or you can leave it hanging on the pole and adjust the height. Um, the toilet paper has a nice little cover so it doesn't get wet the vessel sink in the corner, and of course the toilet on the right. I really appreciate the medicine cabinet. It's one easy to clean piece of uh, mirror. And when you open it, you've got your three shelves there. It's a nice magnet catch, toothbrush holder, a little towel holder there if you need that, and fold down for some hanging clothes or a towel. I really appreciate that they have a fan in the top with a light around it. It's just an easy one push button open and close. Uh, and there's no shower curtain. There is a spring loaded kind of panel that pulls out from the side wall. And 
has a magnet catch on the end. Just makes it really easy to operate. You're right, it is kind of a small space, but it has everything you need. Now let's talk about the kitchen. Right here, you've got storage all across the top. Again, these great handles that just get out of your way when you don't need them. And shelves, let's see over here, you've got the same thing, two shelves. Now these are only about 15 inches deep, but really a fair amount of storage. And when these close, just push that handle in, that locks that cabinet so there's no way it can open going down the road. Huge, really, uh, in comparison to a camper sink, this is huge. It is probably 12 inches deep. Who doesn't love that? A big farmhouse sink with a single arched handle, so easy to fill large jugs and things like that that you might want to take hiking. The window on the back is a perfect place to show you how these windows work. These are dual pane acrylic windows. And uh, if you're familiar with New Camp, you probably know how these work because this is very common with them. It not only keeps the cold out or the heat out, but it also opens completely. So if you just want airflow, you push the button here or just turn the handle, push this open, and tighten it down. Of course, there's a screen and a blackout shade pulling down from the top or up from the bottom. I always like to mention that you can put them together if maybe you'd like privacy and a little fresh air. You do want to travel with them all the way open. And there is one more thing with this window. If you would like to vent it, you simply put this handle, you loosen these, you pull this in, and you put this little tab in the slot. Now what that does is it locks your window down so that it can't open. No one can open it, reach in, but you do get a little bit of airflow through here. You don't want to go down the road like this. For obvious reasons, the air can get up in there and damage your window. So be sure before you travel that all the tabs are in front here and fully visible. That's how you know the window is completely locked. You do get a recess light up here and a little LED strip. So it's not in your eyes, it's just shining down so everything here is visible. This backsplash, it's a, it's a glossy coating and it's meant to look a little bit like subway tile, but I love that it just isn't in your face. It just adds to that nice, calm, neutral feel in here. Now let's talk about the column over here on the right. At the top, that is the controls for the Aldi system. That is your hot water and your heat. It's a very space-saving product, but it also is super efficient and very quiet. If you have a forced air furnace, it is blowing just in one spot and it doesn't circulate the whole cabin as easily. It also has a fan that comes on and off throughout the night. Some people really love how quiet this is so it doesn't wake you up. Very simple to use. You can run hot water without the heat or hot water and add the heat with it. Uh, that's going to come out, like I said, throughout the whole area. Now down below that, the monitor panel, that's going to show you how much water is in the tanks. You get 38 gallons of fresh, 32 gray, and 18 black. So plenty of water in this camper. You also can see how charged your battery is. That's always helpful. Now this camper does come with a 100 amp lithium battery. That's right, it is a lithium no maintenance battery, so it charges really quickly. There is an upgrade to an off-grid package that's gonna include more lithium. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Down below, water pump, the ceiling light, right up here above us, and then down here, the accent light on this side and the accent light above the dinette. Below, obviously a 12 volt plug-in and the USBs and a 110 plug as well. Now we're gonna look across at the dinette section. This is another thing that's different in a 2023 model because they took the batteries and the inverter and put it underneath, raised this dinette just a little bit. The other thing that's different, you don't have the large overhead cabinet above here. 
Gives you plenty of headroom without that cabinet. And they did put in a nice shelf with a netting in front. So you do have a little storage up there. But honestly, I just love this huge window. Now we're gonna start down below uh, because right here, you've got great storage going all the way underneath this seating. There is also access to the Aldi system we were talking about. And if you lift this panel, they put a nice little handhold on it for you. You'll be able to see that Aldi system under there. Now it shouldn't need a lot of maintenance, so don't worry about that, but it is accessible. You can also remove the board underneath this seating so you can you know, get a little more access and look down underneath on what's there. Now, while we're talking about the Aldi system, one more thing I do wanna tell you is that you wanna check the levels of glycol in your Aldi system from time to time. Where do you do that? Right here inside this cabinet. So in the very back corner, you can see uh, there's a space to see a visibility with two marks on it. That's gonna tell you the level of the glycol. Very easy to just open that up and you can add a little more glycol when you need it. That part is really all you have to do to maintain the Aldi system on a regular basis. You wanna check your manual because occasionally, every few years, you'll wanna flush out the system. All right, down below here, back to this space, you do have the carbon monoxide LP detector and another 110 plug. Really nice to have that there if you're sitting here working on your computer or anything like that. The lagoon table in this dinette is one of the nicer features here because it's adjustable. Now, a lot of lagoon tables you can spin around and this corner actually hits the wall. So you can't do a full spin on this, but you certainly can move it one way or the other a little bit. And the best part is you can adjust it up and down. So you can set it really at whatever height works. This table isn't perfectly square, so you could have it lengthwise instead of side to side. Anyway, you can adjust that to put it wherever it works for you or drop it down and you make a bed. Now, if you do put this down into a sleeping area, it makes a 37 by 69 inch space. That's almost six feet long, so a really nice second sleeping area. And this is really a comfortable space to sit. I just like to stress that because you are in kind of a tight area here, but it is very comfortable up here. And this huge window right here by the dinette is one of the reasons why. You do have two lights right above you, so if you're working at this table, it's gonna be very light if you need that. But if you wanted something a little more out of your eyes, the recess lighting on the side just gives it a perfect feel. There is a nice hook up there uh, on the other side of the wall, right underneath your smoke detector. So nice place to hang your keys or anything else that needs to be there. And let's not forget the center of this area has a fantastic vent that is gonna create a whole lot of air circulation if that's what you need. It also is reversible, so it can pull air in or out depending on the temperature. Underneath this seating is going to be a little more gear. Now you're gonna find the inverter and you're also gonna find the 100 amp hour lithium battery. Let's talk briefly about the off-grid package that's available. Both of those features are standard on this camper. And that means that the plug that is up by the television and the plug that is up front in the bed area are both gonna work if you are camping off the grid and not plugged in at the campsite. However, if you wanted more power and you wanted to run something other than a computer or maybe a CPAP machine, then you can certainly upgrade that. You can get four more 100 amp batteries for a total of 500 amp hours on the lithium added to this camper, you could also get a 3000 watt inverter in that package. That 3000 watt inverter, it's gonna require a little different wiring, a little different setup, a little different charging system. So it's not something that you can add yourself real easily. If you want that, you're gonna to wanna to get it from the factory. What will that do? That will give you a lot more power so that you can stay off the grid longer. This camper does come standard with a 210 watt solar on the roof. So that's gonna recharge that lithium battery quickly and 
keep you out there camping. All right, so remember two options on this camper. One is that upgraded lithium package. The other one is going to be the rear awning. That's it. In 2023, lots of changes happened and everything else is standard. Now there's a little more gear to talk about. On the front of this step going up into the bed, you will see not only the converter with the breakers and fuses, but next to that, there is a switch that will turn on the warmers for the lithium batteries. Now, whether you have one or whether you have five, you're going to want to turn that on if the outside temperature gets below freezing because the lithium batteries don't charge if it gets too cold. That's going to keep them warm so they'll operate perfectly no matter what the temperature is outside. Now below that is going to be the button to turn on the inverter, whether you have a 1200 watt or whether you've upgraded to the 3000 watt inverter. All that on the front of the step. Now, if you lift off the step cover, again, they've made all this gear so accessible and easy to get to. Not only can you get to the back of all of those things I just mentioned, but it's also going to have the controller for the electric jacks, which are standard, the MPPT controller, and all of the wiring connected to it. Just easy access. That is really great in a truck camper. Right above this step, you'll see the pass-through window. Now, again, that was not standard last year. It is part of every 2023 Cirrus 820 now. Let's move right over here. This is a 4.6 isotherm refrigerator. Again, a bit of a change. This is a 12 volt compressor refrigerator. And I love these because they will cool in an hour or two. You don't have to wait that 12 hours. If you're looking for 12 volt, that's gonna be great off the grid. And it uses a fraction of a standard 12 volt refrigerator in an RV that you may have had in the past. You do have two storage areas underneath with the netting in front, very easy access, and another storage compartment right up here on the top. Now that is the full depth, so it's about 15 inches deep and great space for maybe things that you don't need to access all the time. Right here, you can see above my head, is the air conditioner on the roof. Man, that is gonna keep this place super cool even in Texas heat. The height in here, I am standing on top of the step now. So you've got about five foot here, but if you're standing on the ground, it's 78 inches up to the ceiling. That is another reason that this feels really open in here. 78 inches, that's six foot six. Is that right? So yeah, way up here. Let's go take a look because not only is the bed area really open as well. Now, 60 by 80 is a queen mattress. This one is listed at 60 by 79. So you're one inch short of a queen length. Most of us won't notice. And I would think that standard queen sheets are going to fit just perfectly. Let's go take a look at some other details up there. Up in the cab over, it's super comfortable for me to move around up here, but we have plastic on this mattress, so it's really noisy. So I'm gonna to try to point everything out and hopefully we can show you all the great features up here. First, I wanna show you the Froley system. It is underneath the mattress. I'm gonna make a little noise and lift this up for you. You can see that there. That Froley system does a couple of things for you. It creates a little bit of airspace underneath that not only is gonna keep you like the right temperature, but it's also going to avoid any condensation underneath your mattress. The other thing, it is kind of like a box spring, you know, it's got a little give to it. So your mattress is even softer. Let's talk about storage up here. There is storage all the way around, really a lot more than it looks like. You've got cabinets on these sides. They are matching cabinets. Now, kind of interesting when you open them, they're a little stiff. Uh, the top piece has a light on it, but they aren't enclosed all the way from the top. So it means that I can not only put things in and take them out here, but soft clothes, by the way, that's super nice. But if I wanted to just put something in the cabinet, I could just drop it over the top. Now, I'm not sure that that was what they intended, but it's a unique feature. 
you can't use the top of this space for storage because it is open from the inside. All right, once you get past these two cabinets, underneath, you've got bins running the full length of the side. Very easy to just lift up the tab. I really like that they put finger holds on everything. Um, it's about five inches deep. There isn't a divider between these two doors. The entire length is here, so you've got something longer you wanna drop in there. It'll work great. And really, a fair space if you wanna put some clothing, things like that in there. Down the front, there is uh, speakers at the top, open cubbies in the middle, and down below on this side is going to be your Bluetooth AM FM stereo. Really nice stereo system. I will tell you, it just sounds great in here. And on this side, you have the TV. This TV is on a swivel, so you can watch it, of course, from the dinette or from the sleeping area, and a switch directly under that for the lights in here. So very easy to turn them on and off right there. Let's go to the, the headboard piece of this. Um, right back here, you've got two cubbies on each side and they're identical. The light there on the end and all of this panel on both sides is storage. You don't have storage right here in the center because up above you have a, a regular household plug and then next to that, the 12 volt and the two USBs. So your plugins are right there in the center. There is kind of a ledge, but if you lift that board right there and it comes out completely, then you've got about a 10 inch deep storage space right there behind the headboard. Reading lights on both sides. And these are the reading lights that can be blue or white. A quick touch will make them blue. And if you hold it for a second, they turn white. I know some of you really don't like the blue lights. No reason to have them. You can always make it white if you prefer. The window right behind me, of course, has the same shade and the same blackout panel, and it does open. So you can get lots of great airflow right here above your head when you're sleeping. And remember, if you crack this window and you've got two nice windows on each side, turn on that power fan, you'll have a nice breeze coming through this bed area when you sleep. So a lot of great features up here, a lot of great storage, and now there's more to see on the outside. So let's head out there. So the outside of this camper is just as stylish as the inside. I love the black diamond plate bumper. Not only is it sturdy and really useful if you happen to back up into something, but you know, you've got a space here for muddy shoes, maybe to sit down and tie your shoes, uh, access up to the roof, just a great look, big lights on it. I don't know, one of the great features that I love about this camper. The steps open up here so that you're gonna have easy access when it's on your truck. Up at the top, you'll see, as I mentioned for the third time, I believe, the rear awning. Now that rear awning is the only optional thing on this camper, but rear awnings are so useful when you have a back door because that can keep the rain from coming in as you enter an exit and maybe sit down to take your shoes off, right? Okay, so, and it's power. Both awnings on this camper are power. Now the side awning is standard. Uh, that's important on a truck camper because if it's on your truck, it's really high up there. Working a manual awning like you see on some of the truck campers can be difficult. So again, great features here. The ladder up to the roof. Up there, remember you have not only a uh, roof rack that is gonna be standard as well now, but you're also gonna have 210 watts of solar. So if you need to get up there for any maintenance or to load some gear up there, easy access with the permanent ladder. All right, let's move around just a little bit. Electric jacks are now standard. You saw the switch right on the inside. On the Cirrus, they have marine style cabinets on the outside. That means they're waterproof, but they can be a little trickier to open. Just open up these handles and you gotta give it a little push there. 
This is gonna be storage. You've got the power cord right here. And again, all of these will have lights in them that you can either turn on and off or they can be motion detectors for when you open the cabinet, the light will come on. Makes perfect sense to me. Underneath here, another small storage bin with, again, the motion sensor detector. And all of these compartments, by the way, have locks on them, so they are lockable. Underneath, this is gonna be the Nautilus system. Now, a Nautilus system is a little scary for some people because they're not sure how to work it, but Nautilus really makes it easy. Uh, if you look in here and you have to kind of duck down just a bit, you will see configurations for if you are dry camping and you wanna pull from the tank, or if you want to winterize it, if you wanna fill your tank, whatever you wanna do here, if you just wanna run straight from the hydrant on the city water, it all depends on how you set these four knobs and they give you a picture of exactly what it should look like. So it's very simple. You also have the spray port access here. You saw the coiled tube in another compartment, but it is hot and cold. Many of the coil connections are just a spray port, but this one is a hot and cold water. Below that, you'll see low point drains that are easily accessible. You don't have to stand on your head underneath to find them and the poles for the gray and black. The city water fill also is right here, along with the black tank flush on the other side. Now above that, you've got a switch for the light inside this compartment. And on the left side, if there's cable or satellite at the campsite, you can access that at the top of this as well. There is a hatch at the bottom of this compartment right underneath here, so your hose can come up through there and uh, clamp down. You're not gonna have rodents crawling in there, but your hose doesn't have to be coming through the outside and leave the door open. You can lock up the door and bring your hose again from underneath. Really, just a great system all right here. Okay, let's keep going. Further down the side, of course, the plug in here, we saw the plug that goes with the camper inside the compartment. This is our plug. Um, I like to point out the center of gravity on truck campers. A lot of truck camper manufacturers maybe won't have it marked for you, but this is clearly marked right here. And that's important because you want that to be at the center of your axle or maybe a hair in front of it if you can. So that is gonna tell you if your camper is correctly balanced on your truck. Now, up above, another large compartment. This is gonna be the double propane. So you've got plenty of propane here if you wanna get off the grid. This is a great place to also talk about the diamond plate on the bottom. That area is where your truck is gonna be when you're sliding in and out. They like to keep that protected. Uh, the silver diamond plate is just a way to make it a little sturdier in case it gets rubbed with your truck when you're loading and unloading. All right, let's move around. At the front, of course, the access panel here. And we can talk briefly about electric jacks. Um, there is always access if you run out of power up here to manually crank them and just unplug it right here. And it's very easy if you need any repairs as well. So you wanna be sure that if you want an easy load, you have electric jacks. Over here on the end, just a few more things. You do have some regular 110 outlets in case you wanna plug in some lights, anything outside, uh, the Aldi venting. And down below, another compartment now this diamond plate all the way around, kind of cool, right? Uh, and you'll also see at the top your awning controls because both of these awnings, the eight foot on the side, the six foot on the back are both electric and you've got an on off switch and then the extend switch. Really nice to have that right here accessible. Let me get this closed up here. Now, one more thing I wanna mention there are some color choices in this camper. This is a white with a black uh, accent. You can get a white, a gray, or a charcoal. The accents that you can get will all have black stripes on them, but this second stripe can be a different color, black, white, silver, or red. 
So there are just a few choices on the outside. I will tell you the white with the black trim is what I see the most, maybe the silver with the black trim, but that charcoal, man, if you like that blackout look that's very popular, you'll wanna take a look at that. Well, I have really enjoyed showing you around the 2023 Cirrus 820. This is one of my favorite campers on the market. If you've got that six foot short bed and you are looking for a camper, you're gonna wanna check this out. I'm PJ from Princess Craft RV. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.